America is a country based on racism to the, to the core. Lei Hunani from Hawaii. Lei Momi from Hawaii. And are you guys following the 2020 presidential election? Yes, very closely. Yes. Very, yes. Looking to make racism wrong. And <laughs> that's 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 setting a pretty low bar, well, don't you think? I think Trump has set a low, very low bar in our country, <laughs> where the racists have crawled out from under the rocks they used to hide under, and they're flying their freak flag high. But more importantly, we're here because. All over the world, at five o'clock, Hawaiians are going to be singing some songs and then chanting and doing some dances all over the world from, to, if, to stop this giant telescope from being built on Mauna Kea, a sacred mountain. So this is a simultaneous thing all over the world, every state, foreign countries. Very cool. So you came from Hawaii to New York specifically? We live here now. Yeah. No, but we're always be. Wait, hold Hawaii. on a second. I'm sorry. You moved from Hawaii to New York City? <laughs> I'm, your opinion doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> oh, yes. It always matters. <laughs> you, better, you better have had a good reason, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But we're standing here today. Um, and I mean, if you want to talk about the presidential election, uh, I've been a long supporter of Bernie Sanders, and one of the reasons is because he's been a huge proponent of indigenous rights. He went to Standing Rock. Uh, he was the first presidential candidate to actually speak out against them building this telescope on Mauna Kea. Um, Elizabeth Warren did too, and a couple of them others too, but he's just been a really long supporter of indigenous rights. So he's always been at the forefront of my mind to vote for. Again, I voted for him in the primaries last election. And you? I'll vote for anyone but Trump. I'm, I'm so <laughs> cynical in that respect. It could be a dead dog. If they run the Democratic primary, I would vote for the dead dog. <laughs> well, you, you got to be thinking, if you're, if you're the anybody but Trump camp, right, you got to be looking, how do we get everybody who's anybody but Trump together, right? Any thoughts on that strategically? We're saying that uh, Biden is the guy, but my dream ticket is Elizabeth Warren and Kamala. Mm. Well, Two if, women. Well, <laughs> if, if, there was, if there was a presidential candidate who was offering absolute sovereignty for every native tribe would would that be something that would that would put them above maybe i mean even someone who's saying we're going to maintain the department of the interior and bia and that, that the basic you know uh, uh, relationships between reservations and the federal government that we have today i mean i feel like if somebody just said that they were going to do that there's it's so complicated like you need to have a real plan you can't just hand over something back and have no plan you know so it's it's more about I mean, this is the first step. The first step is making sure that they're not building on our sacred lands. Because again, that is not their land. This was a country that was stolen by American and British businessmen, not even this government at first, and then it carried on to the government. So they need to have a real plan to come in here and give Hawaiians, give all indigenous people rights. Because this is building on a church, you know? If you wanted to go and build a telescope up on the Vatican, you think that would happen? Of course not. Because everybody would protest. They'd be like, oh my gosh, you can't build this. This is a Vatican. Right. Well, what this is our sacred land land just because it's not man-made it's more precious to us because it is part of the earth so you'd want at least the federal government to respect that sovereignty as, yeah. as, as, as land use rights yeah. for, for indigenous cultures and societies and, and the existing tribes that, 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 that are organized in, in the reservation system Absolutely. Today, right? yeah yeah so did you know that there is a candidate running on the platform of, of getting rid of the federal government in a way that would make states independent and at the same time give every Native American tribe the option to be sovereign in a way that you wouldn't have anybody to fight anymore because there wouldn't be a central authority like a federal government that, that would support the building of a telescope or anything that's an interference in those lands because they would now have the absolute right to be sovereign. Yeah, but I'd, the thing, the difficult thing about Hawaii is that it's smack dab in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I mean, that's why they took it, because it's a prime military base. Trade value. Yeah, so yeah, so I can't really see anybody who's going to say, oh, yeah, we'll just give it back. You know, well, uh, to be honest, I'd be a little bit wary. <laughs> well, like, like you wouldn't trust the person's principles if they hadn't, like, demonstrated them right, yeah. over their lifetime, exactly. that kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But if there was someone who would, who would sit up for individual sovereignty and, and localization of government and, and, and those principles, the right to self-ownership, who's made it clear that 
they agree with the basic history that a lot of Americans are in denial of, right. then then you would support a, a, if there was a, like a credible program. Right. Mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I well, but I, I'd first ask if, if you guys know if there you know anything about the the candidates outside of the the two old parties. No. Oh no. Third party. Guy? Independents, Greens, Libertarians. Nope. No. But you're not like a lot of Americans when they when they're presented with this opportunity that like maybe we don't need a president maybe states and tribes can all be sovereign oh we need a president we need a strong central you guys aren't going with that are you states rights yeah well individual rights right I mean tribal rights would you support that yeah as long I mean I think it's a person who's well rounded like if somebody like Trump came along and had that. I would. I, I mean, there are a lot. Wait, are you saying you wouldn't trust Trump? <laughs> but, <laughs> you know what? For something like that, it's hard to trust. Yeah, exactly. Oh, we're, a bit wary of, we're a bit wary. We're a bit wary of things like that. So if so, you like the idea, but you wouldn't trust anybody just coming and saying, "Here's an option." So what would it, what would give you that confidence in someone with that credibility? Would you want to see? Like like a personal history that of, of of something in particular. I think the first thing is having a conversation um, with the people who matter in these situations, which means that listening, you know, so not them talking at indigenous people. Oh, these are the ideas that we have for your life, but saying what do you need in your life and listening to them and having them talk to them, having their them tell them about the sufferings and everything that's happened so that they can really understand. Starting that conversation, but making sure that listening is a huge aspect of that. Well, if the bottom line isn't, we're going to respect your sovereignty, it's kind of pointless, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So are, would you be like open to supporting a candidate if you saw someone saying, this is the plan, this is credible, we're going to get rid of the federal government, Every tribal nation in the United States has the opportunity in this process to be completely sovereign. Again, do you have somebody in mind? <laughs> yes, it's actually kind of a trick question here. Um, it's you? I'm running for the Libertarian Party nomination in 2020 on the platform of dissolving the entire federal government. I was curious as, as if we could, if we could, before revealing that, elucidate just perhaps a, a little bit more specifics in what you're looking for. But I can say I've, I've been arrested over 50 times in civil disobedience, uh, various individual rights causes, um, shall ID, ending the drug war. Miss huh? Rand, you like her? Like Rand? No, I'm not a Randian at all. I'm, I'm I think she is disgusting. Her philosophy is just so selfish. So, right. and she was such a hypocrite. Right. Well, she wasn't really a libertarian. She was an objectivist. Yeah, and, but the libertarians tout her as their, their. Some, some do, but that's when you when you include libertarian very inclusively. But at the core of this is localization, is that we want power pushed down. We don't want a central authority. We want it pushed down to the communities as much as possible and where lands have been stolen for them to be returned to rightful owners, especially okay, when there's tribes. Go back to Europe then. Well, not all of the land here was occupied, but the part that was stolen certainly, certainly should be returned and respected, right? Uh, uh, yeah, it was stolen. Hawaiian Islands were stolen. I'm not, I have no objection to the history there. Uh, the other thing I would say that if you want to talk about listening, and, and I, I would love to hear if, if you have more to tell me that you think would be relevant to enacting such a policy, is that I, I was the only white student to have ever attended the Native American prep school for high school in Rowe, New Mexico. And got a pretty good exposure to Native culture there, and I think I've, I've spent a lot of good time listening and understanding what the concerns of, or concerns of tribes are. And more importantly, the lesson to see is that all of the evil that's imposed from the federal government is a violation of pretty much every treaty that it ever entered into. And that if you see an institution that is evil at its core, you, know, you have to confront it and say, you know, we're going to stand together and say, we don't need the central authority anymore. We don't need this violence anymore. We can have a culture based on respect for individual rights. I mean, yeah, that would be the ideal. Too Randian still, because it has the word libertarian in it. <laughs> they want to smoke pot, but uh, not pay taxes. Well, to not be stolen from, right? I mean, yeah. same thing with, we, we, we could call every, everything that, that the white man ever stole from the natives. That was, we were just taxing it. I don't mind. I don't mind federalism in some respects. I mean, like public schools. You're gonna have shit schools for people of color if it was locally run. Well, the federal government doesn't run any schools. It just hands down mandates through the Department of Education. I could see, like, um, you look at the schools in the South, you know? 
where the um, people can afford or, or the races, send their kids to private schools and you know the public schools. Sure. So, but at least they're getting an education. Right. So I mean, I, I certainly share your concern that there are some places that that wouldn't be better off as a result of this. But that, generally speaking, community-based education would be better than centrally planned education, right? States' rights. That's uh, how uh, the South wanted to keep the slaves. You know, the majority in the state. Fortunately, we're past most of that. We're not past. <laughs> if you're a person of color, you know that America has never gotten past any of that. Right. You look at what's happening now with Trump. They just hit it. They're, you know, America is a country based on racism to them to the core so for the possibility that schools in Alabama might get worse would you take that for tribal sovereignty throughout the United States I don't know I'm I'm really skeptical about libertarianism just because I think it's not so much about liberty as much about I want to get mine and fuck you well at a it's often mispresented as that, but at its core, libertarianism is the idea that you own yourself, and this is an ethics See, concept applied to principle, our or culture. applied to politics. It, that's not our culture. Yeah, yeah. Our culture is aloha. Is what? Aloha. Not mine is mine and you can't have any. Yeah. It's well, that's, sharing. That's, that's not libertarianism. Libertarianism is every human relationship should be free of force and fraud and coercion. So anything that's cooperative should be by choice and should be peaceful rather than forced on someone. So I, I think there's a there's a there's a, a, a merging here when you get past the politicization of libertarianism to the core ethical philosophy that, that can unite people. Well okay, liberty. That's a core thing for you guys? Well ethics really. Huh. Ethics is that, that that you can't use That's force or fraud is Yeah, exactly. Well, it's so, and then localization is how we can achieve a culture more based on that rather than violent central control. Well, how local is that? Like, Bel Air can have their stuff? Well, as, as, as big or as small as people choose to be, right? So if people want to form a giant community, like here in New York City, right, where you guys have chosen to live, people can be a part of this and set rules as a community. But you can't force anybody to be a part of it. If someone wants to leave, or someone wants to opt out, or someone wants to split off and create a new community. How do you feel about healthcare? How do I feel about healthcare? You believe that healthcare is a right that everyone should have, and I don't think if it's if if you if if nations should put their money in a kitty and then deliver it out to people who need healthcare. No, I think that should happen. I think that should happen at a voluntary community level because anytime you force a system like that on people, it's inevitably corrupted. But this kind of volunteer system you're talking about is still, I got mine, and you can't have any. No, it's just I want to share, but you can't force. I can't force you to share with me. I want you to share with me. I want to share with you, but I can't force you. Like a culture behind it, like we had in Hawaii. I think um, American doesn't. Ha Americans don't have a culture. Their culture is McDonald's. You know, they don't have a deep culture. They don't even know what it is from Europe. You know what the the roots are. They are running away from Europe. I mean, I agree with her. I feel like I don't know if if you have everybody in New York. You know, oh, we want to have this way be the way it's going to be. How do you really, I mean, say like we want to group, be a group of people and they want to be a group of people, but we want to occupy the same lands, then, then what? I mean, then you just have a bunch of different groups that are eventually going to form a larger group because they agree with each other. I just feel like it's inevitable that to a point there is going to be some form of centralized power that's going to come through. Sorry, we have to... No worries. Yeah. <laughs> Were you here uh, for the singing? Well, hey, I'm sorry, i just wrap this up. I'll give you guys the last word, but I would just say that I hope this idea of aloha and ethics and localization, community-based organization rather than centralized control can bring all Americans together regardless of culture or lack thereof. So, any last thoughts? I don't, I don't see centralized anything as being an absolute evil. And I see a lot of problems with the individualism of the libertarians. It's very um, sort of an antithetical to my culture of sharing of, um, I, I think that's a misunderstanding because libertarianism is again it's the ethics first it can be communal it can be individualistic like Paul Rand huh Rand Paul yeah Rand Paul 
Uh, no, no, because he's a constitutionalist, so he still believes in this concept of central control. But he says he's a libertarian, is that, doesn't he? No, he says he's a conservative. He's, he's a libertarian-leaning conservative, which sounds like what you were saying about speaking out of both corners of your mouth, right? I'm going to let her have the last That was good enough for the last word. All right, well, thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoy your, uh, your, your ceremony tonight. Nice to meet you. Likewise. Adam vs. The Man is made possible with support from SmartCash. Check out smartcash.cc to find out more about this powerful, business-focused cryptocurrency that is fast, easy to use, and community-centric. SmartCash is designed to be securely used for day-to-day -day transactions and put the currency back in cryptocurrency.